saved a couple more. Okay. okay. Try not to look too... I don't give a... Okay, so, hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm Lauren Drain Kagan. I'm, I'm Lauren Drain Kagan. <laughs> Every time. David Kagan. Um, so we are doing a Q&A today. We haven't done one of these in a while. We did a relationship Q&A before we were pregnant and now we're doing one because we're gonna be delivering super soon. Tomorrow. So. She's going in to get induced. So we actually don't even know when we're gonna upload this video. I don't think it's happening. I don't think it'll be done by tonight. It's, what time is it now? It's 7.30 p.m. and we're going to the hospital for 9 a.m. tomorrow. We have to pack our bags, make sure we have everything ready. Because we procrastinated a little bit again. I don't think that much. We got a lot of things ready, but I feel like there's never enough ready to be, so. That's true. I don't think, I think we're as ready as we could be. Like today which... I, ha I, I got acupuncture, got my hair done. I like, you know, prep myself to try and. Prep yourself. Yeah. Anyways. She, look, she's got marks on her hand because- These are from my acupuncturist to show Dave where to massage me. To and there's some on her ass. Her. There's some on my butt too, yeah. So, so I'm, anyways. I'm poking her ass, just not in any good way. I'm prepped as I can be prepped. So let's go <laughs> to the, some of these questions. Okay, wait, right. so wait. Uh, so the, the premise is, this is these are Q&As for pregnancy Q&A? So we, I put a poll on Instagram asking on my stories, hey guys, ask us any questions about our relationship, pregnancy, uh, the fact that we're gonna be first time parents, things like that, and we got a bunch of questions. And okay, so. Wait, so I have a question, but before that, before we even start into the, diving into the question, we're having, do you think, how, okay, how do you feel, I'm, I'm like trying to figure this out. We're walking in tomorrow into a hospital yeah. with a bunch of bags. Yes. And then a little while after that, we're gonna walk out with a brand new people. Yes. Like. Well, she's been with us the whole time. We just haven't met her. Yeah, that's just, outside. to me, that's just the strangest thing ever. Mind you, like I don't have, Lauren has a lot of baby experience in comparison to me. Like she. I mean, I'm the oldest of four. When I was a teenager, my mom had a baby when I was 16 and another baby when I was 19. So I did help raise babies. So I have some baby experience. I but have it's been never, a while. Yeah, I've never changed a diaper in my life. I've held maybe, I'm talking about six months or a year or under, I've held maybe five babies in my life. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I am like, well, Getting the house ready the best I can, but this, this is gonna be answering some of these questions. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, so, All right. So I just wanted to like preface like where. So we're thirty. Our life we're is. thirty weeks pregnant tomorrow. I'm being in thirty-eight. No, yeah. What did I say? Thirty. Thirty. <laughs> wow, pregnancy okay, brain. So thirty-eight weeks pregnant tomorrow. We're being induced. I want to go natural, so we're hoping for that to happen. And but uh, she's being induced because of her condition. If you saw the previous videos, you kind of yeah. If you see the previous speed. videos, you'll see I had a high risk pregnancy condition. You can look into that and watch. But that we're video. good now. But we're good. We have a planned scheduled uh, induction. So yes. let's just get to the question. Okay, sure. Go. Ready? Okay. Uh, first question: What is it like being pregnant, and are you nervous about becoming parents? So since I'm I'm not pregnant, pregnant, but I can um, tell you I've experienced all the pregnancy stuff oh my god pregnancy has so many different stages and i don't know there's so many different things you go through um i went through morning sickness or all day sickness the first like i would say like yeah. six to eight weeks of pregnancy um food aversions and then i got better my second trimester i was second trimester was back. awesome we traveled I felt good we traveled i felt like i was a whole you know a new person i could work out eating normal Third trimester, I developed the condition, which you guys can watch the video on. I go into extreme detail on what it was, cholestasis, and it was a very uncomfortable and scary and frightening diagnosis. And uh, and then I, I guess these last two weeks, I've been developing sciatica, which is another symptom. It's I not think honestly, so how Lauren sees pregnancy is not how I saw it. She had morning sickness for about maybe two, three weeks at most. She had some nausea. No. Um, all day sickness. Um, I just didn't complain the whole time, but once it got bad, I was like, okay, this is... But, um, yeah, so, like, I never called it, like, vomiting in the bathroom, but, like, um, we couldn't, we didn't feel Aria kick until later than what Lauren thought was possible, because she watched so many YouTube videos about that, always like, oh my god, I felt my baby kick at, like, 14 weeks, I'm like, that's not normal, like, that's not normal. So, we felt her kick, that was really exciting, because for the first time, we we're like, holy crap, there's, like, she's in there, like, she's... That was, that was exciting. I would say the exciting parts of pregnancy are obviously feeling the baby kick, which was like 21 well, weeks. Well, finding out, finally finding out, telling anybody. 21 weeks later, you finally feel the big baby kick. And yeah. then, right, no, right before that, 17 weeks, we found out the gender. Gender, then being telling, actually telling everybody, because you guys don't understand. And then... 
Hold on, let me finish that point. You guys okay. don't understand, like, once the guy, for the guy, we don't really have any excitement in pregnancy until we get to tell everybody. Because for the first part of it, you're just supporting her, she's sick, she's this and that. You're not experiencing anything, you're just like an ob observer of her pregnancy, and you can't even tell anybody or share in it or ask for advice or be excited about it. So I think for me, the most exciting part was when we were finally able to tell more people and it wasn't the secret anymore and I was like I could embrace it more. Yeah. So that was exciting for me. Yeah. So are All we right. nervous about becoming parents? Hell yeah. Uh, I'm excitedly nervous. <laughs> He's nervous. Like He's talking really fast as you could tell. This is his last night of not being a dad. So a dad of a daughter by the way. I'm actually excited to have a daughter. I wanted <laughs> I, I always wanted a boy and the minute she got pregnant I just He was kept, rooting girl. Like, I kept seeing her with I keep seeing myself with a little girl and I'm like Little girl yeah, is. you were rooting for a girl all the way in the beginning. I thought it was a boy at the yeah. gender reveal, so that was a shock for me, but we're both excited. All right. Okay, next question. That um, was one question. <laughs> we're going to have like part three of this Q&A. Okay. Um, okay, but these are actually really fun. This is my favorite way to do YouTube because it's just so interactive, and this is what people want to know. Okay, so the next question is not related to pregnancy. Why did you and Dave choose Nevada to settle down in? Oh, that's... Um, so originally... Wait, where's the pillow? Gra I need the pillow. You need the pillow. Time. The, the pillow carrying me for us. We have a whole story of our, you know, where we live together, and uh, we have a pillow that explains it. <laughs> Welcome to the pillow of the of Kagan, our Kagan journey. migration, right yes. there. Uh, so we started out in Connecticut. I will tell the story because you hate. Oh my God! Here we go. So Just we started in Connecticut, and we went all the way down to Florida. We drove in one car. We packed up all our things in one car. Put up. Rented out our condo, quit our jobs and everything else, and went to Florida. For tried how long in Florida? We were there for four weeks on South Beach. More opportunities opened up in California, so we decided to drive to California. We lived in California for two and a half, three years. Three and a half years. No, three years. Three years. Three least. years. Um, California was cool and awesome, but taxes are crazy, cost of living, traffic, It was amazing. People. Living on the West Coast was a chapter of our lives that was really cool, it was, but it wasn't a place to settle down. It's not a place to start a family. I don't think LA is definitely not for that. The, the culture is just not for that. It's like, if you want to be single and chasing ass all day long, but never be in a it's relationship. It's awesome for fun and parties and chasing the high life, but... I status just, and all that stuff yeah. it's just it's not who we your are your money doesn't go far you're, it's not not conducive to raising a family so we were just kind of like we got to be we liked the west coast and how we were like it was warm it was convenient it's central there's lots of fun outdoorsy things to do but you know we looked nearby and we're like where else can we go that'll be um cheaper so like low taxes uh great property uh central the airport convenient um warm and everybody comes, we, okay, so when we were living in LA, people would come to LA all the time and we would never see them because even though they're 10 miles away, it could take you an hour and a half to get there. So like people would be like, I'm in downtown LA. I'm like, good job. That could be in a different state for, for all intents and purposes because with traffic, it is so Traffic's awful. an issue. Parking is an issue. Here, expensive. Yeah. Here, everybody comes to Las Vegas for whether it's an expo, job thing, Convention, party, vacation. Party, concert, so, bachelorette. Our friends are always in town. Here, yes. It's just a great place to have, I don't know, it's, so far we've really loved it. It has a great suburbia, great neighborhoods. Um, it's beautiful, the weather's amazing. So far, so good. So, so far, so good. All right, hold on, I got a question then. Okay. Wait, what? Go ahead, do you oh. have to go? Well, I, my people ask questions too. You're so hyper. <laughs> Did you have a- I had like, a little bit of energy. Energy or something? I'm Jeez. Trying to stay awake. Okay, what is it? All right. How do you know you were ready for a baby? I knew because my biological clock just like was like bing and it was just on. It went, I had a brief moment of baby fever when I was like younger, when I was like probably 26, 27. All my friends at work were having babies. It was like a baby boom at work with my coworkers, my nursing coworkers and everything. And I was just kind of like, eh, I'm not ready for that train, that train, everyone's aboard, like they're on the bandwagon. I just need a little bit of time to grow up as an adult. I don't know. I you just, grew up? Yeah, I, need, I needed some time to grow up. Wow. Still working on it. But yeah, so I don't know. I wasn't I, ready for the first baby fever. So I pushed it off a little bit. We explored um, travel. Sorry. We explored uh, business opportunities. Um, the fitness modeling career that became like a second venture for me, which was a really fun adventure. And then, um, I don't know, one day, I think I was like about 31 when it just like hit me like, we need to start trying it now. And I was just like, Dave, are you ready? Are you ready? And every- Like literally she woke up like pretty, <laughs> pretty much. Like in a span of weeks, she's like, all right, you ready to have a baby? I'm like, 
we, we, we started talking about it. God, I don't know. What, it's what been year? A, a two year years and a half. ago? No, a year and a half ago. We, we said we we're going to do it knows. like on my, not last year for my birthday, was it? Or was it before that? We started talking about it a, like a while ago, You've like almost two years ago. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, it's going to start on New Year's. And then he was like, well, let's just push it to like my birthday. My birthday. Well, first was my birthday. March. And then it was like, let's push it to the summer. Dave kept pushing it. I'm like, why are we pushing it? Like, this well, is... I'll tell you why. Because we were living in an apartment in LA. And we knew that's not where, we were living in a one bedroom apartment. I did not want to start a family there. I did, yeah. It just, it, so like, it didn't feel like home. Like it, now we have a home. Like it yeah. feels. It didn't make sense at the it, time. It just, but I mean, it you felt have nine rushed. months. It felt like, You have I don't nine know. months to grow a baby. You also have time to like, to move, to change your living situation. We've had friends that have, okay. you know, had a baby in apartments. So like that's, that, that's how that happened. She, it hit her like a freaking truck. And I woke up one day, I was like, yo, okay. All right, let's figure this out. Okay, next question. Okay. Are you getting an epidural and are you eating your placenta? <laughs> I am not eating any placenta and I'm not getting any epidurals. Epidural. Um, Who the hell okay. eats placenta? Hold on. That seems like a very... The Kardashians. I don't give a everybody fuck what the Kardashians do. They, like are, they are a box of rocks with enough plastic in them that they can eat anything. They can, <laughs> they can eat it. Don't get me started. Okay, so definitely not eating our placenta. In fact, we're actually doing the whole cord blood placenta tissue. So uh, banking, banking, <laughs> banking, not That's eating, important. <laughs> not eating, <laughs> banking. So we have a kit. We're going to bring it to the hospital. We're going to, uh, store her, um, placenta and cord blood if it's healthy and viable. Yeah. Um, which we found out by the way, if you watch them, if you, there's a lot of research you need to do it on it. Don't just do it, do it blindly. It is expensive. And but it's not for her. It's just for so the you next know, sibling. It's not, yeah, most likely it's not going to benefit the child. If the child has some form of cancer it, or something it, wrong, it, it could benefit a sibling that has some form of cancer or us or us. So do your research, talk to your pediatrician, find out what it's actually for. This is what, something I was, we were for, kind of mad about because our pediatrician told us and we were like, oh, that's interesting because they don't tell you that on the website. They're no, like, do you want to save your child's life? They'll basically life? tell that... you, convince you t that this could save your child's life from like a hundred different diseases. Or but it form. can't because if, you, if, if the child had any kind of genetic defect, it's also in the cord blood. It's also in the placenta. So they will never use their own for them. They'll, so they might the, use somebody else's If the from child ends up ha developing some type of genetic disorder, the cord blood or placenta tissue has those genetic markers in there. Yeah. So it, just, just do your research, yeah. um, but we're not eating placenta and what was the other question? Um, epidural. Yes, I'm all for epidural if it's what ne is needed. Never done pr this whole labor thing before. I have no idea like sure? what yeah. I'm going to yeah. experience. And so I don't want to judge prejudge other people myself i want to just experience it I think and then on top of that wait, hold wait. on hold on on top of that i have a high-risk pregnancy so for me it was it's not really even an option to do a completely natural home birth water birth hypnotherapy like it sounds beautiful it sounds amazing it sounds miraculous but it's not practical for me i need to make sure my baby is safe she's being induced she's going early like are her lungs safe does she need NICU time you know there's a lot of factors so for me um, I'm getting induced, which means I'm putting my body into labor before it's ready. I'm putting her into labor before she's ready. And it's, you know, they usually do that for Pitocin and things, which makes your body ha contract very hard, go into hard labor fast, and it's going to be painful. So for me to just completely say I'm not going to use epidural would be silly. My mom always had epidurals. A lot of my friends and family have done it. So my mom has had big babies. There's I, a lot of reasons feel, for why I, feel, so. I would like a big needle stuck in my back. <laughs> Again, and, and to this point, the kind of Lauren touched on it is, I think it's fucking ridiculous that people get judged for how they give birth, whether it's a water birth at home or in the hospital or like if you listen, mind your own fucking business. You do you, you give birth however you want to give birth and congratulations and we'll do it the way we think is best for our family it is. and leave everybody the fuck alone. Don't judge them. Everybody, every pregnancy is different. Every woman's different. Yes. Every labor's different. Every relationship's different. I, I think it's stupid There's, for other people to judge us how we deliver. Shut not the just fuck us, up. but everybody. Yeah. The thing is, like, um, judging anybody. I've watched like probably thirty or forty birth vlogs at this point. So I've seen every variety of pregnancy, high risk pregnancies, natural deliveries, inductions, C sections, you name it. I've watched all of them, and they all have their own miraculous story to tell. Or they, in complications they, and scares and, and this and that. And at the end of the day, it's all their story. That's their story. How they met their yeah. baby. It's beautiful. It's amazing and it's like it's like he said not not to be judged so 
in a perfect ideal world, would I do it one way? Maybe yes, but this is how our story is going. This is how Ari is choosing to come, and we'll just do whatever's healthiest and safest. We'll be fine. Yeah. Fuck everybody else. Okay. <laughs> I, dad right. by day, don't care. Okay, who's gonna be the most emotional when she's actually born? Probably him. He'll uh, cry. He doesn't ever cry. So I, I already know I'm gonna cry, but I feel like it won't be. I cry over everything right now. Like I'm pregnant, I'm emotional. I so think, I'm, yeah, I think it'll I'm be interesting cry. to see him. I'm definitely gonna cry. <laughs> gonna cry. It's gonna be so I don't care. I think that's it'll, why it'll, I needed a birth photographer. <laughs> it'll be the manliest thing <laughs> to I do. Just I don't capture care. his reactions. I'm gonna yeah. cry. I know it. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited. I'm excited to meet her. I think the minute I see her, I'm gonna fucking cry. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> Next don't question. Care. Are you planning to have more kids knowing how hard this pregnancy was? <laughs> As of right now, Lauren says no. She's like, oh, how do people, God. she's I... walk, walking around with a cane. And she's <laughs> like, how do people do this? Oh. I honestly, I, I've had friends, I mean, from the church, like when I when I was in the church, they were cult. the cults, they were having babies, like one of 11, one of 12, you know, popping babies out left and right. And I don't remember any, one telling me or prepping me for how difficult pregnancy was, labor and delivery. I mean, and I don't think that they were even in peak shape. But I would consider myself, or prior to pregnancy, in peak shape. Yeah, I but I don't think that fit. I was always working out, eating healthy, you health conscious, watching are. my vitamins, like everything you could really do to get your body prepped, other than be younger. I think, I think first of all, in the cult, you couldn't really complain because that was a sign that God was like. It's a, it's a whole complicated Maybe, thing. Maybe, but yeah, it's but just I feel like I was completely we, blindsided by pregnancy having some difficult things like. I knew you gain weight. I knew you, you know, get a, a slightly uncomfortable, like maybe little back cramps here and there. Maybe you'll waddle Plus, at the end. I had no idea you'll itch yourself silly. No. You had insomnia, that you have pelvic pain, that you have back pain, you have stopped working out, that you'll be nauseous like for okay, weeks. Okay, you're making pregnancy sound you know, awful, I but no I will say this. I had no idea. So no. what I'm gonna say is I absolutely wanted more kids. We and still, I want, still more kids. want more kids. We still want more kids. I just need, One more need kid. a little bit of time to enjoy my daughter and experience motherhood, experience taking care of a baby, yeah. my body recovering, see how that whole process goes before we're ready to plan yeah. the next one. And I think I think one of the biggest problems also is social media because you got you got these chicks out there that are like, oh my God, I'm 18, I'm a millionaire, I got knocked up, here's my Louis Vuittons and Gucci shit. And I'm like, yo, that's not real pregnancy. They never post They never anything. show the hardship. There's no way that anyone's having a perfect pregnancy. Someone's got to experience at least one or two. Now granted, when you're younger, it's probably a lot easier. Your body is not as you know it's it, elastic it's elastic you're not as in, in much pain so in that case if you're in your early your late teens or early 20s you're probably yeah. gonna experience a lot better pregnancy so but, like I said so I think that way, distorts people's perception and that get my it it's not a, that bad it gives me an appreciation for my body to what it can do what when I recover I'll be so I, I can't even imagine the gratitude that I will have when my body actually recovers and to know I created a child and I was able to like become myself somewhat again. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, answering the question about having more kids, it's not just about me and my body. I want my child to experience a sibling because mm -hmm. that is one of the most important things that I have experienced in my life. And if I could have my siblings in my life again, it would be like my on the top of the list of things I would want. So I really think having a sibling is important in life. So to us, in our, and to everybody their own. Yeah. You know, no, I just yes, I think it's yeah. it's been valuable to me. Um. So if I if and when and I and I grew up with my I have a younger sister that's two years younger than me. So I only every single cousin that I have has at least one other sibling. So I think Laura and I want two kids. I, yeah. Sibl no siblings. I don't want to be outnumbered. Two kids. I think siblings would be great. So right. next question. I don't know if you have any questions, but uh, hold on. Let me uh, start it and finish. Uh, restart it because it's at 18. So oh. I just want to make sure it doesn't cut us off in the middle. Okay. What does that mean? 18. 18 